put you on the spot or anything. This is just free. Oh, yeah. It's a free. Talk. We're looking. At, where's the clock? Okay. We're all, good. We're, we're good to go. Good. We're good to go. Holy shit! Okay. Uh, today, um, very good friend of mine, a special guest, uh, Reno Bell Castro. Um, he's a, a, a pioneer in the industry. Uh, owner of MTC in Windsor. Um, he was a huge component to the PFCs that happened in Windsor. He's head coach of TJ Laramie, the Laramie brothers, uh, Blake Nash, Ali Mokdad, Kyle Pripilek, uh, trains the likes of Brandon Marcos, uh, Lance Snow, uh, Eric Montgomery. The list goes on. The, guy, the amount of people that, that you've had in, in, in your hands has been incredible and the amount of things that you do. And I know you quite personally and I've seen a lot of things that you do on the side that you never ever fucking take credit for. You were like one of the most humble guys I've ever met. Um, a great guy. Uh, I would like to call you the king of Windsor because uh, when we were doing the Windsor show, we went down in Windsor and there wasn't anybody that, that didn't know who the hell you were. Everybody knew who you were. Um, so welcome to Studio 88. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jim. How you doing, bro? I'm doing well, man. You right? I can't even believe I got you here. Yeah. You made it. We made it. Yeah. So uh, let's let's just dive into you. Let's let's catch people up who who people who are unaware of actually your credentials and kind of where you came from. And I was watching before you came here. I was watching some of your kickboxing matches, mm -hmm. and uh, I was watching one. And I was like, he's like sixty four and four. Like, what's your kickboxing record? Uh, it was basically like a more with a bare knuckle kickboxing, Thai yeah. boxing, uh, a little bit of like. Uh, the so-called early roots of MMA with uh, the Shido Khan, right, which uh, was like a triathlon where it had a uh, bare knuckle tie boxing and uh, MMA rules, like uh, in an evening. So basically, a component of all put together. Wow. So, so when did you start doing? When did you dive into martial arts? There was a kickboxing uh, first. No, it was, uh, it was four years old down the road, uh, uh, corner of Mateys. Okay. Uh, got introduced there and uh, started ever since. Fell in love Since with you it. were four years old. Yes, yes. So you were, you were with Mady at four? Yes, correct. correct. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. At That's an early crazy. Age, uh, yeah. It was an awesome experience. Um, and it was just something like I just got attached to, right? So mm -hmm. it was good. You meet that to meet a lot of good people along the way and... Uh, and that's what martial arts is about for me, anyways. Yeah. So you're born and bred in Windsor, then. Yes. The yes. whole time. That's yes, why I'm proud. Everyone loves you. Yeah. Proud of Windsor. That's proud amazing. Windsor. And then how'd you dive into the kickboxing scene? Uh, basically, I would say when I was about, it seems like kids start losing a little bit of interest right around that ten to thirteen age, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where I was getting at it. And then all of a sudden, we had a, an individual by the name of Thomas Kuzeski, who ended up coming from Poland, training at the facility. Um, and then from there, like you just, we got to see something different and something else come up and it was like, okay, this might be motivating, but I was still young, but I was able to train with guys like him and, uh, Paul Russo's partner of mine at the gym, uh, Dominic Rossi. Um, and then just basically started working with guys like that. Uh, we got a boxing coach that ended up coming in, Bill Grant, and, uh, he was working with, uh, quite a few of the uh, Canadian champs mm -hmm. and Olympians like uh, Troopish and Andrew Cooner and stuff like that. So it just became a small circle with that. And then I was able to see what Thomas was able to do. And, you know, the older guys were starting to fight and you just wanted to start following that path. And I think from following that path, then we had another younger guy, uh, Jan Kazuba, um, who started like following that footstep of the next generation. So, so it was just something like that that just became a fight city. Windsor is a fight city. Oh, big time it is. Yeah. And the, the town that's come out of Windsor mm -hmm. is, is unbelievable. Why, why do you think there's so many tough guys in Windsor, man? Uh, I, I honestly have like, no idea. What's it's in a, the water? Is it something a, you guys drinking or what? No, no, no. It's a, it's a blue-collar city. We have a lot of great athletes. And I just think, uh, you know, you look at from all the guys that are playing hockey, now we're getting NFLers that are getting in. Um, we just had a guy to go to Shepley who just signed recently this week, who's been in out of, out of our gym, working with Kyle Preplick a little bit, uh, when he wasn't sure what was going on with the CFL and things like that. And now he just signed on, I believe, uh, with the San Francisco 49ers for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Tyrone Crawford and a couple other guys like Windsor is a Mecca for athletes. I just think it's about getting exposure. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about 250,000 people in that general area. Um, and I think that was my biggest thing is like, what can we do, right? Like, what can we do in mixed martial arts? We have the athletes. How do we get the exposure? And how do we get them and build the platform to get them to that next level? Mm -hmm. So if there's any satisfaction, it's like, we were able to do it. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean, you put so much into your guys, man. And, and, and 
the success shows. Yeah, they deserve it. They definitely yeah. deserve it. What athlete doesn't deserve to get to the top and have a chance? Yeah, right? and it and seems like you you uh, knowing you well enough. Like I've seen the way you you handle the, them as well, and I mean their careers. I mean like choosing the right fights, choosing um, the right promotions, putting them in the right places at the right time. Um, you've done a great job of doing that. Is that just you think that's from all the experience you had as a kickboxer? And, uh, you know, you know. It's difficult to say, right? Because I think at the end of the day, like, uh, you need an athlete. Mm. But an athlete can go good, can go bad. Like, mm. fighting isn't like any other sport. You get to play basketball, and you get to play basketball six times a week or six times out of two weeks, right? So you can lose today, but you play the game tomorrow. You move on. So all of a sudden, you got an 80% record. Mm. You have an 80% record in fighting. It could ruin you depending how that 80% record goes. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is you fight today. But you might not fight again in another three, six months. Mm -hmm. And you're as good as your last fight. So oh. if you lose, it's basically, it's career. Like, like you got to talk about another two, three fights before people start talking about you. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's a horrible sport because of that. Nobody understands guys when they fight good guys um, that you can win and lose. Mm -hmm. Right? But what happens is you build from those losses. So you have to know when you're ready to take that, that real fight mm -hmm. and when not to. Like I see guys like coming up like uh, in the pro ranks right here in Ontario and I say, you know, you're looking to build a record at 2-0, and oh, but you got to take care of, you got to take care of your province first mm -hmm. before, you know, you start fighting other guys. If you can't take, if you can't take care of the guys that are 1-0, and 2-0, oh, 3-0, and oh, three and oh, you got to take care of those prospects before you move on to say, okay, where can I take the risk factor? Mm -hmm. Where is it going to hurt me? And and you know what? You look at the contender series or whatever right now, and you look at a lot of those guys that come from regions that haven't had tough fights. Uh, and I believe they paid the price. Mm -hmm. They paid the price for not taking the right fight at the right time, getting a test because you saw it in that situation where you can tell they never went through it. And then it showed, it showed on there that they weren't ready for that level yet. Mm -hmm. Not that they're not going to be ready. But they just weren't ready yet, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I think because sometimes we baby that, you know, we baby like you want to you want to get that seven zero record or eight zero record, but what's that eight zero record if you haven't fought anybody? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you know you look at the guys and and a group that I was uh, still very close with, uh, uh, the London group, right, with Mark, Sammy, Hordeski, who were a big part How of. How did you meet all those guys, anyways? So basically through Mark uh, when he came to Windsor. Mark was one of a. Uh, I'd say uh, one of our main training partners, right? Like mm -hmm. I was probably Mark's main training partner to say, um, and then got together and you saw what Sean Tompkins was able to do with that group. So that really taught me a lot of the mentoring part. It's not about being the best coach. There's, there's no secrets out there. Mm -hmm. Everything's on YouTube. You watch film, you do whatever. At the end of the day is you got to understand how to break every individual down differently. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that group, Mal it's funny you say that as Malcolm said the same thing. The Sean was different with Mark, different with Sam, different with Chris, different with like he was different with everybody that he ever worked with. And you have to be because not every individual is the same. Mm -hmm. Some have a breaking point, some don't have a breaking point. Some you need to hold their hand, some you need to beat like a dog. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh everybody responds differently. And I think that is more what coaching and everything is all about. You know what I mean? And so getting into that group um from an early age and being a part of them and they're like a family to me uh when things weren't going the best and i probably was in a different situation uh in windsor um because of the relationship with mark obviously um i was that was like another family for me mm -hmm. right so we get we got extremely close and um everything else from there you know what i mean and just it's just an experience it's an experience along the way mm -hmm. and the best thing that I can say about that group is they're real. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this sport has a lot of real people. And maybe it's a little old school and maybe I I'm a little bit old, old school. school thing, man, because but I I'll give you an example. You know, Sam, with the loss of Sean, all of a sudden, you know, he was looking for him or whatever. And I was, we were still working together and helping each other out or helping him out, whatever, uh, at the time. And that's when one time he was like, uh, you know what, let's, uh, I'm going to bring you in, you know, like we'll run the camp. And I was like, I'm in a difficult spot, right? At home and stuff like that. But I was like, okay, you care about people. And I was like, we're going to make this work, mm -hmm. you know? And I'll tell you about old school and I'll tell you about honor system. We never talked about anything. 
I was there for him. We did whatever. Um, it was unfortunate. It was near the, it was at the end of his career. Um, but very easily everything's over on a handshake on everything, right? We go for a beer, writes a check. Doesn't happen today. Mm-hmm. It's not normal. It's an old, old school gentleman's agreement. Help you out. Didn't expect anything, but there's a purse, right? Mm-hmm. People get paid for fighting. He accepted and respected the fact of what I tried to do for him or I tried to help for him and the commitment I made along the way, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that is one of those things that it's like, I don't know if that would happen today with so many people. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, and I think that is an old school thing. It's a, uh, it's a respect factor that's out there and says, Hey, it's a team effort. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and you know, you look at a guy like that and what he's gone through and, uh, with his, with his sister, who's a s- absolute sweetheart and like family. Right. And you see how all those guys have adapted to her. Um, you know, I, I think they have a real strong bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very close to each other. And I think that's why they're successful in their own ways. Mm-hmm. You know. Why do you think the new school is different? I mean, you're dealing with old school guys, but now you have the, the new flock of guys, the new generation of MMA fans. I, I, think I'm, I think I'm actually very lucky with our group mm-hmm. back in Windsor because I don't think I've ever... Uh, I think they know I respect them mm-hmm. and I've never sugarcoated anything. I think I've never pumped their tires. Let's face it. We, you know, the, the next group of mixed martial artists are, are absolutely phenomenal athletes, right? It, it, it's not just a guy who can box or who can wrestle or who can do jujitsu. If he, I don't, if you have one good thing, you're not getting anywhere anymore in this world, mm-hmm. right? So what they're bringing you is a skill set that you've never seen before. I think it's basically, no pun intended, but it's like massaging the situation, right? trying to put it all together um, and being real with them. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, how's the example, you know, um, TJ Lerman, right? Let, let's, let's go with that one. Great example. Is he good? Without a doubt, right? Mm-hmm. How good was he at 18? How good was he at 20? Was he ready at 20? Was he ready at 22? Is he ready now? He's ready now. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you look at guys that we've always tried to give the opportunity when the opportunity was right. Um, like, like an Ali mock dad, we've always been able to present the right fights at the right time. And basically one fight away from getting to the big leagues, Mm -hmm. you take care of that fight, you get to the big leagues. So I don't think we've ever not tried to do the right thing for any of our athletes. You know, you just had to pick and choose and you had to be real, the situation and, um, and I think they see that in that way, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, um, I don't know. It's just, it, it's When did weird. you meet TJ? Uh, TJ probably around 13 years old, you know. You've been with him since he was just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. TJ was probably around 13 years old. Um, um, he had talent, but everyone's got talent, right? Like, guys, we live in a crazy world. We live in North America, 15 to 17 years old, 18 years old. A lot of things can change. We've seen so many good guys come in the gym and, and I'm sure everybody has all over the, all over the place, but they're no longer here at 18. They're no longer mm-hmm. here at 19. So it's like, distractions, friends, there's totally girls, friends, girls, school. alcohol, partying, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, social media is a crazy thing. One picture and everybody says, thinks you're making a million dollars today mm-hmm. and nobody understands you're still starting out and you're still trying to be somebody. Right. So you got to still stay, you got to stay very humble in this sport. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it's a sport that can pass you real quick. I have this, I have this thing. You have a group that you start with, then you become a little successful and then it's second phase of your life. Because when you become a little bit successful, there's so many people that are gonna be your friends and they want a piece of you and have fun with you and what are you doing tonight? And that's the distraction phase, right? Mm -hmm. When fighting's all over, if it doesn't go very well financially, then you're in the third phase of your life. The third phase of your life, if you forgot about that first group, there's not gonna be anybody left because that middle group is gonna come and go and find the next, the next, Mm -hmm. the next person, you know? And I think that is something that I've definitely learned from the adrenaline group was they're all still together, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's not about fighting. Everyone has a chance to fight, but when it all goes bad, you better have something, you, you better remember the guys that were there from the beginning and helping you out along the way. 
Mm, 100%. You know? But, um, yeah, it's just interesting. Interesting. Yeah. You know, you talked about a guy like Eric Montgomery. Uh, and I always push, like, I always push go to school first or go get a trade first, right? Mm. Because it's not going to work out for everybody in fighting. Not because they're not good enough. They might have lost the, they might have lost that fight mm-hmm. at the wrong time of their career, right? So you got to have that backup plan. So you look at like a guy, Eric Montgomery, who I think is very good, underrated. Everyone asks, you know, about why he hasn't had a lot of fights. One of the reasons is, you know, he's a paramedic. He goes away. He's working. He's, he's mm-hmm. making money, right? Fighting's always going to be there. Unfortunately, obviously now we're hit with COVID and everything else. So mm-hmm. it slows things down a little bit, but you don't stop somebody from making a career. Fighting is not a career. You know, fighting is a state to try to financially get set. But how many fighters are actually set? Mm-hmm. You know, you got you to gotta break the top 10 for a long time and and hopefully things go good and the money's going better. But if you lose that fight at the wrong time, mm-hmm. you're out, you know. See, the cool thing about TJ, when I look at TJ mm-hmm. and he, you look at him, he says he's a fighter, but at the same time, he's a barber. Like exactly. He has something to he has fall a passion. back on. He, he has a looks passion. back and... and, and if you were to take fighting completely away from him, which obviously would devastate the shit out of mm-hmm. him, but he has something to fall back on. And I think a lot of these guys forget that if you don't have a second plan, if you don't have another back door, it's so, it's hard, man. This is a tough industry for, for guys to get to that next level. Yeah. It's literally, I mean, look at TJ's career. You know, win, 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 win. He, he, he got those losses in TKO. And then... And at that moment, would you have thought he was ready for UFC? TJ wasn't ready, right? And we would and we butted heads because of certain things. And, and after those losses, and then he came back. He was a completely different guy. He was a completely different animal. He was a complete everything about him changed. You mature, 100%. and and nobody understands. You know, you're not mature at seventeen. Mm. You're not the best at 20. Like, you're not even in your prime anymore in fighting until you're like 28, 29. Everybody wants to rush it, right? Mm-hmm. And you think there's a lot of money out there, but like if you lose and you're out and you think you can get in at 20 years old or 21 years old, Mm -hmm. and then you're out after two fights, now what do you do? Mm -hmm. There's not enough money out there. TJ Laramie is now ready. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. He has a chance to be a superstar. Mm -hmm. I see it in just the way his demeanor, everything about him is, is he's been in, he's, he's been in tough fights already. Mm -hmm. He has had every look. He has had every embarrassment. Um, the light's shining down. There's no pressure anymore, mm-hmm. you know? And, and that's, and that's probably the thing that right now that we're going through with, uh, with his younger brother, Tony, uh, Tony Laramie might be the best ever. Mm-hmm. Right. But now he has to learn how to be a pro. And, and that means the work ethic that goes behind it. And not that he doesn't work when it's ready, but mm-hmm. I'm saying the work ethic that goes behind of, you know, okay, I'm only 20 years old. How good is Tony Laramie going to be if he stays on course mm-hmm. at 23 years old? That's when Tony Laramie is going to be special, mm-hmm. right? Because he's already special, but he's not mature enough yet to, sure, he can win fight. I'd put Tony Laramie versus anybody at mm-hmm. 125, and he's not going to get embarrassed, but he also could be, could lose two in a row, three in a row, three in a row. Mm-hmm. Then what happens to Tony Laramie in his life? You know, that's, that's the biggest difference. So I think that's where I maybe come in because you really try to work on that end with the guys. Mm-hmm of saying, you know, let's slow this down. 20 years old is still young. 19 years old is still young. Who wouldn't want to be with Tony Laramie right now and say, hey, I'm going to get Tony Laramie in the UFC. I'm oh, going to get Tony Laramie in the Everybody. Sharks are, everybody. Moving. sharks are in the water, man. Everyone's. But yeah. are they really, do they really care about Tony Laramie when mm-hmm. Tony Laramie goes out and two? No. They're going to move on to the next. Yeah. And I think that's the different special thing that I think we've, uh, been able to have with all our guys. And I wouldn't stop anybody from doing anything. Everybody has a right to their decision. But I think at the same time, we have a right to make our own opinion and voice our opinion mm-hmm. of what, what our thoughts are, you know? Um, so, so that is, I think, what we really got to, with young athletes, it's like everybody wants to get there, but, you know, you don't get a degree overnight. Let's slow this process mm-hmm. down. Gotta be, uh, teach, teach them patience. Patience, patience is mm-hmm. everything. You know, and capitalize when uh, when it matters. Mm-hmm. You know, so you coming back uh, from Apex Center? Yes, Apex, yes. And you've been to to millions of shows. What was that like? It was a very, very difficult experience. Uh, 
And what I mean by that is no different than you and I talking whatever right now, especially when we got to the center. Um, you know, you locked down for four hours. They had their own individual locker room. So it was myself, Kara, and TJ in a room. And usually you have, let's say, some outside noise. And what I mean by that is like, you know, blue corners on one side, red corners on the other side, four or five teams in a room. You know, you're getting there early. There's some jokes. There's some other people talking. You know, you're having those conversations. So it really mellows the vibe a little bit, right? Mm. Um, this time it's like you got three people in a room. You know, you can't see anybody else. Nobody's nobody's wow. there. There's no conversation. You're in fight mode four hours early. And what I mean by that is the adrenalines, the, you know, the mind starts playing games with you. Um, uh, it's like being, it was like fighting in a gym, which I don't mind, but the experience leading up to it was different because you were locked down for four hours, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I could just imagine what TJ might've been going through. You know, How like, did he um, seem? oh, he seemed fine, but you could see the, um, and I could imagine with other fighters, you could see that, you know, how do you, what's the expression? You don't want to blow your load too quick. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep that adrenaline rush down a little bit. You know what I'm trying to say? Like you don't want to peak too high in that, in that, uh, in that area, uh, by just chilling and relaxing and warming up. And then, you know, your mind starts playing games because you want to get out in their fight, but you still can't get out in the fight because you're still sitting around. You're still waiting for your time to thing. You can't, there's nowhere to go. You're mm -hmm. locked down, you know? Um, so I think it'd be a difficult experience for a lot of fighters, especially for their first time. And I think now that he has experienced that or when a, when a fighter has experienced that for the second time, I think they're a little bit more used to that situation. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would think knowing that you're going to war with somebody in four hours, you're thinking about this. Um, well, it, it, would, dreams are yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be difficult. It'd be definitely difficult. How was it with no crowd? Uh, it was, it was like a, being in the gym, in which the gym. I didn't mind, which I obviously didn't mind. Um, but there is definitely no adrenaline rush, like or some or crowd to try to pick you up or anything mm -hmm. like that. It was basically like you got to be the best guy in the gym. You know who's the best guy in the gym today? Yeah, because he looked fantastic. Yeah. Who's the he, best guy? Yeah, in the gym? Malcolm Gordon was in yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't think this was on camera. We had shut the cameras off and we were just shooting the shit afterwards. And he had said that um, he goes in that fight. He's like, man, the transit. He goes, I learned something from his jujitsu in that fight. Just his transition, his using his head is the way. But it, it, it's not, it's not jujitsu. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was it, MMA and jujitsu. That's, and that's, and that's what and, he said. And that's the difference. And, you know, Malcolm actually reached out to me, uh, I want to say a night or two nights afterwards, uh, after that fight, when I got back home. And, and he said the same thing. He's like, you know, to see that, guys, at the end of the day, like, you got to punch somebody in the face. You got to mm -hmm. open them up. And that's what MMA does. MMA, that's like, exactly what use, Malcolm said. Use your strikes yeah. to open somebody up, right? Once they open it up, take what they give you. Mm -hmm. But like guys are so good now in individual sports. You And that is what mixed martial arts is. And George St. Pierre is the best. Mm -hmm. George St. Pierre is the best at what he's done. Why do we want to reinvent the envelope? <laughs> Go back on film yeah. and copy the best. Forget about the guest Canadian. The best probably ever at what he did. Mm -hmm. He dominated guys on the ground. He just didn't rest there and hold you there. And maybe at a little bit later in his career or whatever like that, but he beat people up along the way when he was in whatever position that he was to open guys up, they gave it to him and then he took whatever they give him, mm -hmm. you know? So like, why reinvent the envelope? That's a success story. Copy the greatest ever if you're in that position, yeah. you know? There's no secrets out there anymore, you know? Yeah. How long has MTAC been around? Uh, we've been probably about eleven years now. Yeah, probably about okay. eleven years, and it was awesome because we had a we had a very good, strong stable right from the get go with uh, you know Brett Frank Zeus, who I don't I, you know I don't think people really realize how good that guy was for his era. Um, he went four and one. His only loss, I believe, was to Josh Hill, and this was a tough time where like there wasn't a lot of fights in Ontario, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the picking and choosing became quick and obviously he moved on a little bit more with his career. Um, um, but you know, from Jeff Thomas, uh, uh, who was an amateur champ, uh, we had a really good amateur group going up, you know, and then with the Josh Tavern who came in, uh, it was just a, just a number of guys in that stable, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, it was just great to see. And obviously like, None of the guys from Windsor ever seemed to have been to shy away from the fights, 
right? It was unfortunate at the time, I think with that early crew was we didn't have a lot of options, mm -hmm. right? So you had to, when fights came, you had to take some of those tough fights. Um, but one thing that that group's always been remembered for is their toughness. Uh, they were always in shape and they always came. Like one of the things I, I remember Misha uh, had said, because he would come down to Windsor a little bit. Misha. Uh, Kuchinov. Okay. Um, he would come down to Windsor a little bit or, you know, we'd meet up in London with Ali and Blake and those guys. Um, cause you needed the bigger guys when things started getting ready. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he never could believe how strong Ali was. Mm -hmm. And he was like, till, you know, obviously later on in his career, like even with some UFC fights, he was like, that was the toughest fight I've ever had. Ali Mukdad. Yeah. yeah. I seen him uh, fight on the reserve. Uh, yes. Yes. Back in 2009, I think it was, or 2010. Mm -hmm. No, it was 2010. I sent you the picture the other day because I found the Yes, yes, the yes, you did. Yes, you did. I which, like, oh. I said, which I sent it to him and his wife, and Devin. Yeah, That's and they started, they started laughing. Yeah, because I saw it. I was like, oh, no way. It was a box of DVDs, and it was it was, it was was from the fights, from mm -hmm. from the res. And I was like, oh, fuck it. Ali Mock, that. What? Mm -hmm. That guy was like a specimen. You, you know what? Like, um, it was just, honestly, it's just, I don't want to say wrong era at the wrong time, mm -hmm. but I think that is a guy that didn't get enough credit, but he didn't get credit because I think the main guys like Elias and, uh, and, uh, and Misha knew how, how tough he was. Mm -hmm. Right. And obviously he had a great win, a couple of great wins. I think the biggest thing was there wasn't enough fights. Right. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't get those right fights to develop an individual back then where basically it was like, okay, who are the top guys? Okay. Put those two together. Cause that's the only way this can get done. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember you know? asking you about him for the Windsor show. Yes. Say, yes, what yes. About, and you, and, and, uh, I can't, I, I care about, two, and that's, I, and that's exactly what you said yeah, to me. You I'm said, not letting these guys about, go. What about Mark? Yeah, you know, I'm not letting him in there. And you said, uh, you said, you know, you know what, Jamie, man, I, I'm not I love letting him these too guys. much, man. Like he's, uh, yeah, I'm not letting these guys like Blake Nass, Josh Tavern, yeah. um, Ali just be, uh, you know, uh, a stepping stone for somebody. It's, it's not mm -hmm. going to happen. You know, they're, they're, they've all, they're, they got families. They're all doing well for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen. You know, it, it it's over for them. But it's not over in the way that they can't help the other, the new young generation. Mm -hmm. It's over in the way, like, no one is going to put those guys as a stepping stone. I'd go, oh, I just beat so-and-so. I just beat so-and-so on my resume. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not going to happen. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think someone would roll through them at this time. I'm not saying they will. Like I'm it, not saying they will. Mm -hmm. But just in case. They can't commit. Because There's, of families. Because of families. And if we can't do this commitment, we can't do it real, then why are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. to, to pretend we're an MMA fighter? Is mm -hmm. that the new cool thing? And, you know, like, what's cool about it? What's cool about being an MMA fighter? You want to be a professional athlete. That's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You want to make money. Is what you want to do. Right? It's not just yeah. a... That's a great take. You want to get somewhere. You got to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you got to have that passion to get somewhere. You know? Who's the next star? Amongst all the other stars. You know what? We, uh... <laughs> Obviously, Tony Laramie, it, Tony Laramie is the next star. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got we got some good young kids coming up the ranks. But I don't pump tires, mm -hmm. you know, because like, I don't know what's going to happen in two mm -hmm. years if, you know, they find that girlfriend or if they get that job or anything else. But we are looking at doing some different things, whatever, right now at the gym um, to have them more involved and basically even open it up to a lot of other gyms to mm -hmm. go do your own thing, go hang out, go, go work with whoever you want to work with, because that's, you know, I, I don't believe you should turn your back on those guys because they've been with you together or you enjoy it, but why not open it up for mm -hmm. others? Right. So we are looking at doing some things where, uh, we're, we're, I don't want to say like, uh, I don't want to call it a fight team, but more like getting guys together from whoever want to come in mm -hmm. uh, and have them join in, you know, and have them hopefully get better and have an opportunity maybe to take it somewhere, mm -hmm. right? If that's what they really want to do. But we're going to, we're going to isolate that group where it's not going to be like, you know, um, one year in and I want to go train with Kyle Prepolek, like, like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not going to work. It's, it's going to be like on an invitation only. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say show us your resume, but like, are you here because you really want to be here? Or are you here because you want to take pictures and say, oh, look who I worked out with today? Mm -hmm. You right? get a lot of that? Uh, I, no, I don't think we really do at our mm -hmm. gym. I really don't. Uh, we have a really good atmosphere at our gym. You know, uh, we have a family center, a lot of kids, a lot of different groups, a lot of average Joe and Jane's, uh, like uh, people that come in to train and work out. Um, 
So, you know, I don't think we get a lot of that because I think, uh, like fighting is a difficult thing to do, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, those guys out pretty fast. Well, it just, it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work. Everybody. How's the COVID affected the gym? Uh, and, and Windsor was in sta- like stage yeah. two forever because it's a border city. Uh, how did that affect everything? COVID is horrible. COVID was mm-hmm. horrible. And, and like, so I, I said to I said to Nancy the other day, who's, uh, who's one Nancy? of our part- uh, one of our partners with the gym with okay. Paul. I know who she is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tell, tell us who yeah. she is. Um, so I, I said to her the other day when she was like. We were just opening up for the first week. And obviously there's, you know, uh, different ways of how we can do things and open up and all that. And I said something to her along the ways of, uh, uh, she's like, what's, what's up? And I was like, I was like, you know, you built the thing 11 years ago, right? And you knew it was going to go good. The passion's there. We knew we were going to build it. Like, I feel very good at what I do. I know Paul's phenomenal at what he does. Um, we have great personalities and I think everyone who walks in that building, you give us a, a chance. Mm-hmm. If you want to do this, there's no other place in Windsor that you should come if this is what you really want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I said, I go, the biggest difference is now we're starting from scratch. You know, how people can register, how people can come in. People don't even know how they can come in right now or if they're allowed to come in or what mm-hmm. app they have to sign up for. So it makes it very difficult. So I feel for any martial art business or any business out there, it's so like I. you built a place to succeed and things are going, things are going very well at, at MTC, but you build a place to succeed and then all of a sudden it, you lose it without your control, mm-hmm. right? Nobody, nobody can, it's one thing to lose a business on your own end. It's another thing to have it taken away and you can't do anything about it's it. It's funny. Justin Brookman said the same thing. Yeah. And just, Justin's an old school guy. Yeah, uh, you know, imagine. anytime you run into a guy like that, like uh, mm-hmm. you respect and, you know, how do you say it? Like people are like, you know, people should have backup plans. Well, if you own a variety store, that's your job. That's your backup plan. I swear to, Justin yeah. said this, like I said, right, this like, pretty much said the exact same you know, thing. He's like, you know, this is what you bread, what you do, you yes. know, and I, like if this is all you've ever known and all you've ever done. Like, mm-hmm. There is no fucking backup. Plan. Like, like, this is what it is. Like, like, it's, and it, it would be like working at the big three and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you know, like when I mean big three, like the crisis, the Fords, the GMs, right? They've supplied the 401 mm-hmm. uh, up and down, especially our city for so long. Well, you know, you should find something else. How do you find something else when you've been working on something for 20 years? Mm-hmm. Like everything was going good. I, you make good money, like working, working on the line. Why that's, would you change that? Yeah, right. That's always my fear. Even like my full time job. Yes. Yes. And it's like, man, like. What if we don't make it to retirement? Mm-hmm. What if things shut mm-hmm. down? Because the world's always changing. It's always yeah. adapting. And then what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I'm 41 years old. Mm-hmm. I've been in the same industry for 20 plus years. Like the fear yeah. of that. And I couldn't the, imagine being an entrepreneur or owning a gym. Well, the biggest thing is you don't change it till it's broken. Mm-hmm. Right? If things are going fine, why, it's would, like, you? why would you change it? Right? Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's just no different than in, in fights. Right? You know, you have different strategies and how to win a fight. And you go through this and that. But at the end of the day, like, you don't change up the plan mm-hmm. and, until it's broken. You don't say, okay, let's go to plan B because we're not successful because mm-hmm. we're successful in plan one or we're not successful in plan one, right? Like, well, they say if plan one's successful. There is no you, plan B because yeah. you've, you've if, taken away from plan A. Yeah, if, if plan A is successful, you just keep going plan A and you mm-hmm. roll over somebody, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, that's basically what it is. But... So TJ's got a fight coming up. Yes, yes, yes. How are you guys preparing for that? Uh, he's in Vegas, whatever, right now. Tony was uh, uh, able to go down with him. Uh, he's there with Cody Stamen, which has been a big help. And, mm-hmm. and I think Cody's very good for for, for TJ. Um, build-wise, size-wise? They're- build-wise, size-wise, older. Yeah. So, he, he, you know, he's been able to see a lot. He's he, He's taken TJ under his wing, almost like say a, a, an older brother mm-hmm. right and uh and how to be a real pro and i think uh i think and, and i think he's been very good for him mm-hmm. i really do uh i'm gonna head out uh earlier this week um than last time i don't know how you do it bro full-time job running a gym running a family hockey like well, you were like the, the hardest guy to pin down i don't know how you like with the travel like, like my wife would I, I only came because of you jamie <laughs> yeah, my, there's my no wife. other reason i would have came yeah. to do this uh inter- or podcast whatever you want to call it other than you yeah. but uh yeah it's just it is what it is life gets in the way life is busy but you know like but you managed to balance it all listen when you're in you got to be all in mm-hmm. when you're in you got to be all in 
When you, you know, see these guys fight, do you does it make you reminisce about your fighting? Days? Zero chance. Really? It's How over. Because it's over. Is that why? It's over. How do you think you would have fared at MMA if you had a? Uh, I think I would have done extremely well. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I just you know what I mean. Like uh, everything that I was able to do, I did at a high level, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that wouldn't have changed anything. Like, you know, I was able to train with good guys at the time uh, that were very successful. Um, I think I'm, I got the respect for them still mm -hmm. because of the, uh, those training sessions, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. But that being said, like, it's like anything else, man. If you want to achieve something, you work at something. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're good at this, go get good at that. You go get good at this, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you, you got to, you got to, get outside of your bubble and get outside of your comfort mm -hmm. level to be successful in life, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the fight world. And that's where you see the more successful guys coming right now is, you know, go wrestle with that guy, go do jujitsu with that guy. Who's the best boxer here? I'm going to go box here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about being the best boxer. It's competing. About, and I'll go back to George St. Pierre. He wrote the book on it. Yeah. Why do we want to follow excellence? Why do we want to steer away? Mm -hmm. You know, why do we want to steer away from it? So when you were doing all the kickboxing, mm -hmm. I just want to touch base on this because you're like, like, like you have a phenomenal record, man. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and it's it's known, but it's not. It's never talked about. What mm -hmm. was that like in the kickboxing scene? Traveling, going all over the. You, all know, over I, the I mean, you were you were I Canadian got, champion. Yeah, but I, I got extremely lucky, and obviously there was no money in the game. Uh, but I mean, it, it was just an era that you grew up with. But what year was this era? Um, probably early nineties. I'm gonna guess early nineties, mid nineties. For the most part, oh, wow. I was right? just in high school, <laughs> late '90s. But uh, you know what? I I guess I got to see a lot mm -hmm. uh, on somebody else's dime. That's the way I got to travel. I got to travel, you know, overseas and uh, stuff like that, and things probably I would have never done at an early age, or things I would have seen, or people I would have met. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest things, whatever. Right now, that I can say, I've met so many great people uh, that were involved in the sport. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever work with uh, Leo Laux or oh, Brad Leo's Fowler? Never worked with them, but like uh, I have a lot of respect. Like when I talk with like Leo, Leo's an older guy, right? So when mm -hmm. you talk to a guy like Leo, or you know, he you said cross a lot of paths. nice things about you too. I had him. But is listen, you can learn from anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, he, Leo gave me advice once about an, one of my athletes, and it was probably the best advice anyone might have given me. Um, and it was like, uh, you know somebody that might be an addict, right? And it's like, how do you control that addict? You keep giving him his drug. If his drug is fighting, mm -hmm. just line him up to fight. Because if he doesn't line up the fight, he might be steering away, going to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so, you know, I would have never thought anything of that until you get this older guy who's done everything mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? And he's like, this might be, this might be the way of this drug. Just keep that individual fighting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, so mm -hmm. it's like, when you look at that, I was like, man, thanks. Thanks, dad. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. but yeah, for sure. For sure. You ever fight in Japan? Yes. What was that like? It was the greatest experience of my life. Tell me about it. Uh, like 20 something thousand people Jeez. like screaming down at you. Uh, very silent. Every time a job hit you, the crowd would go crazy. Yeah. Right. But it was so respectful and so, like, uh, I don't know. It was just the atmosphere was unbelievable. Like, I think I was in, I think I was in the hallway once, and I and I needed some ice. The culture, I absolutely love the culture, and I, I needed some ice. And oh, I see this person then running down the hall, right? Like one of the workers running down the hall. And I'm like, all right, like, what did I do? You know? And then ran back with a bucket of ice. I was like, it, I, I just couldn't believe it. But I, it wasn't because of anything. It was just, I, that was, their culture was just so open and so mm -hmm. loving. And so like, they loved fighting, you know what I mean? It was, like I said, I think it was the, by far the greatest uh, experience I've ever had. Uh, I love to have fans like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, like just. Imagine 20,000 people. Uh, 20, <laughs> geez, I'd be happy with 5,000 people, bro. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, but imagine like 20,000 actual fight aficionados. Mm -hmm. Guys that are like there because they appreciate the sport. They're appreciate mm. the martial arts they you yeah. know that that stuff gets lost and that's what and, and i think that's what that's what we like to see like in our gym you know and uh you talk about the different relationships we were able to make with guys like uh you know I had, we had an amateur guy chris Hyten, um you know 
getting married to someone that he met from the gym, mm-hmm. you know, they went off to England. She became a success. She's uh, now getting an internship. Uh, she's back now uh, to become a lawyer, right? Or something along those lines. Called us, hey, can we use you for a resume? He's back, you know, they're together. They're going to start the next phase of their lives. They got engaged, didn't even know. We walked, they walked in the building mm-hmm. out of nowhere, didn't even know they were talented. And they were like, hey, so showed the ring. Like, you know, those are, those are stories, success yeah. stories of, 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 MC, of MTC. You know, to hear stuff like that and uh, to see stuff like that. You got a guy like Shane Monahan, who everybody knows on the amateur scene and, uh, you know. My double uh, champ. Your double champ. <laughs> he's my double um, champ. Yeah. But, you know, obviously he's older and, you know, uh, he's had a lot of issues, obviously, with uh, the visa issues and stuff like mm-hmm. that and to get licensed. And people don't understand how expensive it is. We had to jump through a lot of hoops, man, to get him. You, you feel bad for a guy like that, right? But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, Here's this guy from Ireland, you know, and he found MTC and it's, it's like family, you know, mm-hmm. he, he just found another individual. It's just like family and there for people and a good guy. And, um, it's, it, fighting has nothing to do about fighting. It's the relationships you meet along mm-hmm. the way. And right? that's one like, thing I notice about all you guys when mm-hmm. I, you know, if I'm, when I'm around you, the, the camaraderie, yeah. the, the, the relationships, the way everybody treats you, and nobody talks shit about each other. They're all like everyone supports each other. Windsor, and, and, it, Windsor on its own was its own. Uh, Windsor, like, like I said, we have a. It's a small city, but mm-hmm. it, like everybody knows everybody, and the support has been unbelievable. And uh, to see Kyle get that support, and to get uh, to see TJ now going through that and get that support, and uh, I, I think it's just awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. I think it's just awesome to see these guys do it. Randa got that support, you know, like at the beginning, like with with her. Uh, I think it's just absolutely mm-hmm. phenomenal, you know. But yeah, like she I said, because I met you the first time I ever met you was the very first PFC. Yes, yes, and yes. That was uh, you? You put a uh, Kyle on the card. Yeah, and and Randa. At yeah, the time. we had to go through some hoops. I think on that one, or oh no, that was the second one. The second one the because second she one. took a fight early and she yes, had a cut yes. above her eye. How, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's had a pretty long lasting career. Oh, she's, she's tough too. as like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, obviously there's no secret on it. Like uh we had parted ways and that's part of the sports business and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And you look at things uh differently earlier on than you would like four years later, five years later. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, you're getting older, you got no time for drama and at the end of the day, like uh you wish people the best and uh mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, she's as tough as they come. Mm-hmm. You know, she's as tough she's as She's going to be on the same card as TJ the next one. I did hear that, yeah. yeah. And you know what? I hope she wins. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, like, I'm telling you, she's as tough as they come, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, that's probably why she's still in it, you know. And mm-hmm. she's still doing what she's doing. And she just got to get that streak. Uh, she just needs that streak. Yeah. It's a tough I game, just, man. It, it's a very tough game. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. But like I said, hopefully she can get a W and hopefully things go well for her. And, mm-hmm goes from there but does that stuff ever worry about you with upcoming guys like guys like staying with you and then you, you know, know they hit superstardom and then they're you like can't, ah, you I can't gotta go. you like, can't control it you mm-hmm. can't you can't you honestly can't control it people are going to do what they want to do i mean not that i think that i'm no, just it, saying like does it, that it, it in the happen. back of your head do you, do you worry about that no i mean hold on i won't say no mm. what i'll say is the grass isn't greener on the other side right that's that's what i will say mm. you know look at Kyle's a great example. Mm-hmm. Kyle got in, right? Look at TJ Laramie. TJ got in. Mm-hmm. You have to win fights to get in. That is that is the bottom line. You know, mm-hmm. win your fights, things will get taken care of. You don't win your fights, nobody can get you in. Mm-hmm. Look at Trey Lampson. Where's he at now? Mm-hmm. Why isn't he in the UFC? Because he lost his last two fights, mm-hmm. right? And I think Troy's good, but who can get him in? Nobody. Man, he fought, he fought a killer, Robinson. But, but who can get Troy Lampson? Who can get Troy Lampson in right now? Nobody. No. Right? You, you need fights. You need a platform to succeed. And I think that's what people don't understand with what you were trying to do. And that's why I jumped on board because I, I saw your passion for it. And you know, to build that team and mm-hmm. everything else that we were able to try to do. Um, well, we discussed but, this quite a bit. But we need it? a platform. Yeah. If we don't have a platform, look what BTC is trying to do. You know, like. If you don't have a platform, there is no success stories for the fighters. Right. You know. Yeah, you got to get them get them their fights. Mm-hmm. But you got to get the right fights. And that's what we we just we talked about that quite a bit was, you know, putting the right fights together, 
kind of um, like you had this plan for these guys. I remember when we talked about it and you were like, man, you know, Jamie, like three, four fights, you know, we're going to do this, 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 like you had it all mapped out. Mm-hmm. And that's, it, that's, that's managing. Yeah. That's managing a career. Mm-hmm. Managing a career isn't, let me make like right at the end of it when someone's like seven and oh, eight and oh, uh, let me get you in. Mm-hmm. Like you're getting in on your own. Is the fight in BC? That's probably why you're getting in. Is the fight in Ontario last minute? That's probably why you're getting in. Mm-hmm. If you're from the States right now, you're probably getting in the UFC on a last minute thing with a, with a good record. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Are you good enough? Maybe, maybe not. But like where you live and what you have to do, like is probably helping your situation right now, especially during COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give fighters that? Patience. Yeah. Patience and and... What about choosing management? What about choosing oh, a gym? People, no. like, what would you say to a guy completely out of our region? If, if you were to write a book and say, hey, this is kind of like the... the uh, there's no there's no secret. I, I have no no idea. I, I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> That's honest. That's no, honest. I'll be honest. I no idea. Like people have to do the right things for themselves. If they think, if they think it's the right thing, they're going to do it anyway. So why would you talk them out of it? Mm-hmm. You know? True enough. How are we doing for time here? We're good? Uh, yeah, 45. 45. You want to keep going? You want to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> a little, just a, I'll give you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little you're a bit. man. No. Um, how's Kyle doing? He's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's such a good kid. Uh, he's figured out, obviously, we've gone through a lot of testing, yeah. a lot of things, and we were lucky. With can, we the, do, can we talk about that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's open. You know, yeah. like, uh, we'll... We'll see where this goes. Whatever now, uh, He's some we had a cramping, right? That's, that's, so at yes, the end of the yes. day, let's uh, let's like, touch base on that. So, okay, uh, he, he took a last minute fight UFC mm-hmm. um, at one seventy, mm-hmm. so at a higher weight class, and then he got another call. He fought uh, Austin Hubbard mm-hmm. at fifty five, mm-hmm. but he had some issues. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember back before UFC days, he had issues with his legs for, with cramping. What's going on? What do, what do you think? Uh, he's got a little bit of a genetic disorder and a thing called uh, rhabdo. And we've luckily with the UFC and uh, their insurance policy, they've done a phenomenal job on trying to look into things and sending them over to the States. And, uh, you know, with uh, Dr. Faisal looking at stuff and everything else like that. Um, at, at the end of the day, he... He's got an idea or an understanding how to change some things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we actually had a, we actually did something in in early August where we put him through um, what we like to call it like a fake fight. Um, and we like we have this thing like with our fighters that if you can survive this, you can survive any fight. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so we basically did four or five minute rounds. Um, and it's not sparring and it's not like, uh, it's not fighting, fighting. But if you can last through this, you're ready for a three round fight. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Any, anybody who has gone through it. Was we, it like a anaerobic type? It's, 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 it's everything's live from anaerobic, from aerobic to, to live. So like, walk me through the whole process. Mm, can you? Uh, it's a little different. Like, you know what I mean? It's hard to, it's hard to talk through, but you're put in such bad positions over mm-hmm. and over and over again, where we've had guys quit. Like Shark Tank? Shark Tank, but differently too. Mm-hmm. Way like worse than Shark Tank. Like uh, you're going to break. If if you, you might break. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And I've had Tony Laramie break. Really? You know, you know, yeah, he threw a glove at me and everything <laughs> called me. Just a pistol. But we hugged it out afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I broke you. I yeah. broke you, Tony. That's what happened. I broke you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but you're, when you last, you know, you're ready to fight. So we actually were able to do something with Kyle. Um, after he did what he had to do uh, to try to take care of things or see if he could take care of things with what they've given him and through the resources through the UFC and uh, the different doctors and uh, the specialists that he's been able to see in that time. Uh, and, you know, I, I think we were almost breaking him, mm-hmm. but he, I think his mind was just playing tricks with him or whatever like that, but he went through it. The next day he felt phenomenal. That night he felt phenomenal. So I think we're over that. Um and now we're just going to try to figure out a situation uh, to get him the right fight. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about Kyle not fighting. It's about how do we get him a fight and, you know, and, and, and move forward from this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So. He's, and that's one thing. All you guys are so polite. Mm-hmm. They're very respectful. And, and, and 
it shows a lot, man, what you do for these guys. Uh, it, it's a family atmosphere. Yeah. It's a family atmosphere. These guys can call me at any time or joke around at any time or we'll have drinks together at any time. <laughs> that, oh, that, that I I'll know. Ne- that I'll never <laughs> say no to. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it's definitely a bond that, uh, you know, if we close up the doors tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? If we close up these doors tomorrow, we're still going to have these bond with, bonds with these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, the stories that they say, the, being on the road and, you know, having fun with the guys and uh, knowing so much individual things in all their lives uh, that maybe I shouldn't know or anything else that they open up and they talk about. Like, uh, uh, it's a bond that lasts forever. Mm-hmm. No doubt. No doubt about that. Yeah, I can imagine it'd be a, an emotional roller coaster at times. Oh, fighting's yeah. emotional. That's probably my biggest problem is yeah. probably because I'm Italian and I'm an emotional individual to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, you just, you live and die by the sword, mm-hmm. right? Like you got to practice what you preach, um, but you really got to love the sport to want to do it. If you don't, If you don't love the sport, you will not be successful in it, mm-hmm. and especially for a fighter. You got to enjoy that work. You got to enjoy the, you got to enjoy that grind. Mm -hmm. If you don't, like, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Wow, Reno, man. You're the fucking man. I love you, Reno. Uh, Give some shout outs to some sponsors. Uh, You know what? We've been lucky back at home with the relationships that we have had over the years. Uh, Obviously, with the Layuna, the IBW, the IBW Construction Company, uh, sorry, Construction Council of Ontario. From man, from Mike Marshan, uh, who who supports the guys so much with you know giving things and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But you know, from Motor City Community Credit Union jumping in one time and helping out you know along the ways as well. Uh, and then look at the support from Windsor. Anytime that we've had a mm-hmm. we've had a card that all those companies that have jumped on. Well, the, and, the, the last the last two cards in Windsor mm-hmm. was. Man, they, they, these people came out because of you. Like yeah. you were like that. If I didn't have you in Windsor, the Windsor show would, would never well, have been successful. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't be able to mm-hmm. have a show. Like I don't think I don't think people really realize how important it was to have those people in Windsor come through um, to be able. Maybe they're partners. Are they partners of the show? Mm-hmm. Because without them, you don't have a show, mm-hmm. right? And and what I mean by that is I don't think the athletes appreciate. I think we do. Mm-hmm. I don't think the athletes appreciate these guys jumping on board to help put on a platform and give these guys a platform to, to, to succeed. Mm-hmm. We might not be talking about a TJ Laramie being in the UFC right, right now, you're right because look how many TKO cards were canceled. Look how I mean, yeah. not that he wouldn't you wouldn't have gotten a fight somewhere else because you've always been good at, at making sure that they had fights, but to do it in your hometown at home with no pressure and, of travel and the support, right? It, mm-hmm. Like to walk in and, and be a favor in the in the crowd, yell like the atmosphere was unbelievable mm-hmm. in Windsor. Uh, you know, to bring that home and to be able to get it done, it was one one of those things again, mm-hmm. like. If we build it, they will come, you know, and it was, uh, it was getting there. And you look at TKO with Stefan Patrick, and I think we, I, you got to respect what he tried to do or did, mm-hmm. right? He gave guys a platform to succeed, to move on. Mm-hmm. You got to win tough fights. He put some of those guys through tough fights. Now, maybe I think for some, I think they were too quick, too soon, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's maybe where, you have to understand your bargaining power a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I respect Stefan Patrick for what he's been able to do. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you look at what he's been able to do, he built something. He sent guys off to the UFC, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, with that platform, he gave them tough fights. Like I said, I think some of those guys didn't deserve or need those tough fights, but he's also trying to put on a promotion. Mm-hmm. That goes back on managers and that goes back on the fighters. Shame on you for not figuring out mm-hmm. this on your end, right? And I think... At the end of the day, that's why I can respect Stefan. I think that's why he can respect me is any situation that we had, he had the right intention for the company. I had the right intention for my fighters. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, TJ Lemmy wins. He goes, sends a text, you know, out of nowhere. And I don't talk to this guy 24 seven. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. sends an audience. Awesome. Congratulations. Great job. You know what I mean? Like I saw Jordan fight. Um, 
and I really like that guy. And I think he, I think he is special. Uh, I think he's also young. And if I had a, if I had a Jordan, I know what I'd be doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I'm not saying right or wrong, but I'm saying, uh, uh, and I know Stefan manages them right away when I thought, Hey, good luck to that kid. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, you want to see people succeed, right? You want to see people succeed. Heck sure. man. I like, you look at Josh Hill, Josh Hill doesn't get enough credit. You know, look how good he is. He's fighting in Bellator. He's doing well. Had a phenomenal performance. I don't even watch fights. Like, mm-hmm. uh, really, like, well, unless I know a guy really fighting, right? Unless it's a big card, because there's so many of them now. But you look at a Josh Hill, it's like, what a performance. He gets older. But you know what? You get better with age. Mm-hmm. Right? And, you know, you look at guys like that, pioneers of MMA in Ontario, and it's like, uh, I don't think they get enough credit. Mm-hmm. So No, our, our province definitely has... The best. Probably the best, the best. Man. Yeah, Probably we're the best. The best. Uh, hands down, man. I'll argue that to the end of the mm. day, man. I mean, Ontario fighters are the best in the country. Mm. Yeah, it's, for sure. It's something we're drinking. Oh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> for sure. Okay, man, let's wrap this up. All right. Um, I really appreciate you, bro. Love you. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thanks for having and, me. Um, I only came for you. <laughs> You're the man. Okay. Right. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Reno Bar-